Hello, filming the intro in the studio today because I'm a big dum-dum. Long story short, I filmed all of today's video with the my Rode microphone plugged into the headphone jack of the camera as opposed to the microphone jack. And even though I'm usually pretty good at staying on top of, uh, you know, listening back on clips as I film them, obviously you know where this story is going, I um, didn't check until right at the end and I started looking through the clips and realized there was no audio coming out of the camera at all. I thought, that's strange, I have seen waveforms as I've been filming. Of course I wasn't getting any audio out of the camera because, like I said, the microphone was plugged into the headphone jack. So pulling that out and I realized the entire video had been filmed using the internal microphone of the camera. So it could be worse. The only clip that's a complete write-off is the intro on the car. Nice. Good one, mate. Hence why I'm filming this today, just the noise of the car is just too much. Luckily the rest of it isn't too bad, the microphone built into the camera did a pretty decent job considering I turned off most of the enhanced settings so they don't muck around with my microphone at all. There is a few bits where the wind gets a little bit too much so I'm just going to throw subtitles in so it is what it, it is. What it is. I, thought I'd, I thought the whole video was going to be a write off so uh, I was uh, fortunate that a lot of the footage is salvageable. So anyway, onto the intro itself. What was I doing in that car? Where was I driving? Well, to answer that question, well, the answer is Mundajong, which is about an hour south of Perth. And the reason I was going to Mundajong is because that's where the, there is the start of a abandoned railway line, and that runs all the way to the back blocks of Jaredale. Now, this is interesting because there's not many like abandoned intact railways in the Perth metro area. As far as I can tell, this might be the only one. Hopefully I'm, I'm wrong about that. But it's been, it's, it, they opened it in the late 60s and it ran it up until the late 90s. And yeah, like I said, usually when a track finishes service, they rip it up straight away. But for some reason, this one's still there. So let's cut to the back blocks of Mundajong and we'll be making our way from Mundajong all the way to Jaredale, which is basically becoming a second home for the videos at this point. All right, so here we are at the start. I don't wanna go any further than this because that is a live train line and it is illegal to walk on those for good reasons. I believe that's the line that goes to Bunbury, which is featured in a previous video. But as we can see here, the, uh, the lines have been removed and separated from the existing line. And here begins the journey to Jaredale. It's in pretty good condition considering it hasn't been used for 25 odd years and there's actually on this section at least there's not too much shrubbery growing out so if you remember the train line from the uh, Boyop Brook episode the trees growing out of that were basically mature and that railway line has been closed about 15 to 20 years longer than this one. So I'll give it another couple of decades and they might be full-size trees. So a bit further down the track, just a couple of dozen meters, we are at the Wright Street crossing, which has been completely removed. And I'm, I actually forgot to check when this was removed, so I'll do some investigating when I get home, but I do know that it predates any sort of um, street view captures. So at least prior to 2008, 2009. But as we can see here, it's been completely paved over, not only by just by this footpath, but of course the road itself. And we can just see the, uh, the ghostly remains. Obviously I won't be walking the whole train line. The train line is 18 kilometers long in total. And I've just picked out some key points to check out along the way. So we'll just walk down this train line just a little bit. We can see there is the remains of infrastructure, utility boxes, stuff like that. And obviously that's looking quite far gone, whatever it was, some sort of power box. So like I said, just about everything's still here. The railway line is in pretty good condition otherwise, so We'll hop back in the car and we'll go check out the next crossing. All right, so we're a little bit out of London John now, we're sort of in the suburbs. And I just wanted to uh, check out this particular railway crossing because it's very old, it doesn't have any, any sort of barriers or anything like that. I'm getting 
evil died by some local residents, so I'm not going to stick around here too long. It looks like this crossing was just for this property, which is some sort of farm. Check that out. But obviously pretty good for the residents. They haven't had to put up with the noise of freight trains or anything like that for a, quite a long time. So that's just where we came from. And the local dogs are going off, so I'm going to get out of here. Okay, so that's where we came from, where the dog was. And we've come to another disused crossing. It's quite a busy road, I'm pretty surprised actually. I'm sure I'm getting some weird looks from the locals. But here they've at least somewhat kept the tracks, but they've built a barrier right over the road, right over the railway line. I have to be careful, I did see a dead snake as well. But we can see there, there's some old infrastructure there in the bushes. Like I keep saying, it's amazing that it's all still here all these years later. So here we are on the other side of the guardrail barrier. You can get a better look at some of the cool old railway stuff that's still around. So we've got an old culvert or something in there. And this portion of the train line looks mint. I reckon they could run a train on this tomorrow if they wanted to. It's amazing that it's just been sitting here so long, abandoned. We'll get into the history soon. Just wanted to get into a few more secluded places away from snakes, dogs, and automobiles, basically. So, yeah, it's an interesting environment nonetheless. So let's hop back in the car and see what else we can find. So here is probably the coolest aspect of the whole thing. The remains of a bridge. So I'll go up there, and as I'm going up there, we'll do a little uh, detour to Mundajong, and I'll show you the rest of that bridge. So here's the missing bridge that I believe was removed sometime in 2016. Not entirely sure. You can see it's pretty big. I've just put it on the uh, railway reserve here. We're just across the road from the uh, the Shire buildings there. Let's see if I can get you a shot. Hopefully that was interesting because I'm not entirely sure what I was looking at. As we can see here, it looks like it's probably been hit by a truck or something at some point. As we can see from the remains of the bridge, it would have been a pretty low clearance. And yeah. Not really that much to see, but interesting nonetheless. There's even weeds growing out of it. All right, apologies, I had forgot to put the windsock on the microphone, so hopefully the previous footage isn't too windy and you can understand what I'm saying. I won't really know until I get back home. But anyway, this, uh, this bridge, like I said, was removed sometime around 2016, and as we saw from the previous shot, sh uh, shot in Mundajong, has been removed. So like I was just saying, the track is in almost mint condition. Let me just give you a quick shot in the other direction. Like, the railway line is in remarkable condition. It's, it's amazing that they haven't shot, they used it for some sort of like tourist railway or something like that. But then of course you see that this entire bridge is missing. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a problem if you want to run a train here again. I don't think I'm really going to bother walking to the other side. But it's pretty much just what we have on this side. Obviously it's inaccessible. I'm going to stay on this side of the fence. I don't have any reason to go over there. If any law enforcement's watching. But yeah, as we can see there, the train lines just stop. But of course, only temporarily. Let's head to our next stop. This is extremely steep. <laughs> I'm uh, filming just in case I fall over because it'll be funny. I probably won't think it's funny now, but I definitely will while I'm editing it. I was just going to say, I forgot to mention while I was up at the top, but this bridge is what spurred me on to investigate this entire line to begin with because I've driven along this road quite a lot for work and yeah, just go through that, through the old, old arches here of the old bridge and you just have to wonder to yourself, where do those go? So. More or less, I'm a bit out of breath now. That's what this whole video is about. All right, we've traveled a considerable distance from the last shot. 
there were a few places I was thinking of stopping along the way but we're sort of running out of daylight here so but I think most of the places I was planning on going pretty much look like this and as we can see the railway line is in much poorer condition here it's like the bank is breaking and it's like separating the railway lines I don't know I've never really seen anything like this before so interestingly the railway line here has just completely disappeared I did set up a waypoint to come down here and check it out and I couldn't quite remember the reason as I was driving but I guess it's the reason why. See how the ends there are, are painted yellow? Yeah, it looks like they've deliberately removed this portion of the track. I'm not exactly sure why but that's it's interesting nonetheless I guess. Okay, now that we have some peace and quiet and we're away from other people basically, I guess I can start reading off some facts. So, what was the point of this railway line? Well, it was for a bauxite mine owned by Alcoa. So, the mine opened in 1963 and then closed in 1998. Over the 35 years of service, it supplied 168 million tonnes of bauxite. I don't really have too much information otherwise. It, apparently, it connected to a Quinana spur line, so it could transport the bauxite directly to the refineries there. Um, what else do I have? Arc infrastructure refers to it as Jaradal number no. 2 brackets 18 and apparently 18 stands for 18 kilometers long otherwise it's part of the uh wagr lines so that's western australian government railways um the original line did run to a timber mill as per my previous videos shot in uh Jaredale. there's something crawling on my arm <laughs> um uh, but that was closed in 1962 um this train line did close in the late 90s, but you can actually see one of the trains in operation in a 1995 capture, so that's, that's pretty cool. The final train ran on the line in 1999, and then a special one-time passenger tourist service run by Hoffman Valley ran in 1999. Supposedly, the mine site was rehabbed in the May of 2001, but this is our COA we're talking about, and as we'll soon find out, they have been in a bit of trouble with how well they have perceived to rehabilitate the land that they they've used for mining and whatnot so basically we're going to follow this line to its end point which will be the next stop and we'll see for ourselves how well the bush has been rehabbed okay so here we are at the end of Alcoa road which is kind of a cool abandoned road in its own right but as we can see the uh the bitumen ends so the kia can't go any further and now we walk. So believe it or not, this is the railway line. So somewhere in the bush in between where we just were and here, the train lines just stop. <laughs> but obviously the alignment's still here. I believe this area is now a, uh, I don't know, like a, a leisure area. There were people on dirt bikes and stuff when we got here. So yeah, we're gonna follow this and sort of see where it goes and see if we can find any remains of the former bauxite mine or remains of anything really. So a bit further down the track, all the ballast has reappeared. It's kind of random how some of the train line is here in some spots and not in others. I'm sure there was a good reason for it, but this of course is now looking like a rail line was here. We're in a cutting at the moment. Hopefully this isn't too difficult to walk on. So just an update, <laughs> nothing too interesting, but I do think the, uh, the rock cuttings here are fairly interesting in their own right. And I haven't really seen much in the way of abandoned railway stuff. Actually, there might be some stuff up ahead, actually. But um, yeah, I've just seen like railway ties, bits of wood, obviously a lot of ballast, which is super fun to walk on. Let's see what this stuff is up ahead. So... Not entirely sure what that's supposed to be. And here we have information about this railway cutting, which is on the heritage list or on the register or something like that. And I couldn't quite figure out why. Wasn't expecting these signs to be here. So we'll go on a bit further to a different railway cutting I've been meaning to walk to. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit more information about these rocks. You guys ready for a geology lesson? Hope so. Plenty of uh, jokes about things rocking. I don't know, I'll shut up now. Let's move forward. So we're out of that big railway cutting now. It's sort of just in the, behind the trees there. And this is becoming to look less and less 
looked like there was a train line here. The further in we get, the uh, well, just the more that the bush has taken over. So it looks like all of this has probably been burnt recently, controlled burn, I would imagine. So it's actually not that thick, but yeah, I can imagine it would have been quite thick before this recent burn. Anyway, I think there's another railway cutting through there somewhere, so we'll keep going for a bit and sort of see where we end up. All right, we finally made it to the waypoint on my GPS. Looks like a few other cars made it here too, and then never left. But we've been more or less just been walking through the bush, following a track. Obviously, all of it's all grown over. I'm not sure if it's like deliberate or not. Look at these rocks. Okay, so I found what was called the Jaradale Railway Cutting on the Inherit website, which was nominated for a geological monument in 1991. And the railway line was still running then, so I incorrectly thought it was this, because I spotted this on, on maps. But I think it was that area we were in before with the signboards. So anyway, why is a railway cutting heritage listed? There's plenty of railway cuttings in Australia, and it was the first one that I've seen. So basically, it was nominated by the Chief Executive of the National Trust in 1991, and they included it on the register because apparently it was a research site of national and international importance with uh, bauxite, laterite, and laterite development. The area is of a scientific importance in reconstructing past Australian climates and, I'm probably going to say this word wrong, geomorphology. So apparently it's an important teaching site for Tateri, um, for you know students in the Perth area, and apparently it's regularly used for this purpose. So. There you go, things of note, evidence of past climates, stuff like that. So this isn't actually the area for that, but I'm sure this is cool regardless. Hopefully the sort of person who comes here and dumps cars doesn't rock up. <laughs> so there's a railway cutting down there. And what we're looking at now is more or less the remains of the site, of the mine site. So. For some reason there's heaps of stock photos of this the side of this mine. I'm not entirely sure why. But as we can see on the ground, it's all bush. It looks pretty good to me, but obviously I'm not in the know for these sort of things. Uh, the WA's Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions claims Akko hasn't actually met their rehab criteria for any of the nearly 28 thousand hectares they've mined across WA. Four thousand of those are here. <laughs> so I think it looks pretty good. It looks like bushland to me. It's crazy when you look at photos, aerial photos of what the place used to look like, but apparently they haven't done a good enough job. So I think the deal was if they did a good enough job the taxpayers would basically foot the bill, which I don't agree with at all. But apparently they haven't met the criteria, so apparently they've got to pay for it. So Basically, Alcoa sucks shit. So I'm a massive genius, and I've just realized I've filmed this entire video with the microphone plugged into the headphone jack, not into the microphone jack. So there appears to be audio, but I apologize massively in advance if it's really shit. Obviously, it's not using the, the wind thing or anything like that. So pretty disappointing to figure that out right at the end of, of, of the video, but I guess I'll just have to move on. So regardless, that is the end of the video. We've followed the train line all the way from Mundajong to here in the middle of the bush. The railway, the railway line is in very good condition, closer to the, the metro area, but out here it's just completely gone. And the mine site is also completely gone. So say what you will about Alcoa. I'm not a massive fan of them personally, but it looks like they've done a good enough job, but apparently they haven't. So yeah, <laughs> in future videos, I do plan to actually use the microphone properly, which I've spent a lot of money on, so I'm pretty disappointed about that. But if you would like to see future videos, please subscribe and like. Not only does it feed my ego, but it also just helps with the YouTube algorithm. And the last video about Boyot Brook has done incredibly well. So if you're coming in from that video, hello. I think there's a car coming, so I'm going to wrap this up. So see you in the next video, hopefully, if you don't think I'm too much of a big, stupid dum-dum.